Hey, it's Andrew Huang. When I first started learning about mixing, uh, and I'm always learning, I'm forever a student, but when I first started really diving in and researching how the pros do their mixes, I found I kept coming across this one concept which seemed like the biggest trick in the book, and that's parallel processing, uh, which basically means if you have some audio that you're putting effects on, instead of dumping the effects on one after the other, you'll have copies of the same signal and you'll process them differently or you'll have an unprocessed version alongside the processed version. I guarantee you some version of this concept is used on every single major modern mix. I'm gonna show you a bunch of examples and your mixes are immediately gonna be sharper. Today's video is sponsored by Baby Audio, so I'm gonna use their plugins. You do not need to have their plugins to accomplish anything I'm gonna show you today, but their plugins are amazing. I bought the bundle myself a couple years ago. Uh, you may have seen some of their stuff show up in my past videos and uh, they've reached out now and wanna sponsor something. So huge thanks to them. Let me show you these tips. All right, number one, this is probably the biggest one, uh, parallel compression, also called New York compression because that's where it originated. And this is very simple. You take the original signal, you take the compressed signal, you blend them together to varying degrees. Uh, the most easy way to do this is if you have a compressor with a dry wet control on it. So using parallel compression, you really get the best of both worlds. You get the natural dynamics of a sound, but you also get the punch of the compressed version of that sound. Uh, you can use this on pretty much anything. It's very common on drums. Let's use something from the count. Here's the dry loop. Now I'm gonna put iHeartNY2 on it. This compressor is great because uh, you have a dry wet control, but it's on an XY grid where uh, the amount of compression is also on the other axis. So uh, you can move this slider up and down to control the blend between the original signal and the compressed signal. And you can go left to right to turn up the amount of compression. Um, so let's, let's start dialing it in. You can hear as I get to the top end of that compression range, it gets really nice and saturated. You might not always want this, like we're losing a little bit of definition in the kick, but I do like the harmonic distortion that's coming in. So we could just keep the amount of compression there and dial back the mix or come back a little bit on both. So we end up somewhere more in this zone. Yeah, I like something there where it's feeling like you get more of those transients coming through, but you also get that nice punchiness. Comparing to the dry signal again. So the compressed signal can be really aggressive and then you just mix it in with the original uh, to whatever degree feels necessary. And you'll find um, this is especially great on vocals too, uh, where you can just get something to really bite and cut through the mix, but without it having this harshness that you would normally associate with like oversaturating or over compressing something. I've been Speaking of vocals, this is an area where all kinds of creative parallel processing can just bring so much more depth and interest to a vocal. So uh, here's the example we're gonna use, track I've been working on for a while. I've been running through the dark, searching for a spark that's true. It's tuned and compressed, but there's nothing special about it. So uh, let's put on some super VHS, which is kind of like a lo-fi effect. There's chorus, there's a bit of pitch drift, uh, there's a little bit of distortion. I'm gonna start blending it in. So this is already in parallel. We're mixing in the effect with the original signal. I've been running through the dark, searching for a spark that's true. This feeling is tearing me apart. I'm looking to the stars for you. Might be a little more pronounced than uh, where I would normally go with it. But for the sake of uh, a demonstration, I think it'll be better to go a little more extreme. So I've got that in this effect rack group, and I've got a second chain here with a crystalline reverb on it. Now let's just unmute that track. I've been running through the dark, searching for a spark that's true. So now we've got this pristine reverb on the vocal, but it's the dry vocal going to the reverb and the dry vocal going to the chorusing and distortion effect. This gives us all the fun of that chorus and distortion on the vocal without it um, clouding up 
the reverb signal. Because you can imagine if the signal being reverberated had distortion on it and had some pitch drift on it, then the, the reverb itself would be much less clean. And uh, I've heard of people who even auto-tune the reverb of their signal. Like they might tune their vocals, but then they'll tune their reverb even harder so that it just like blends in really well frequency-wise with everything else that's going on. Kind of an interesting idea. So being able to treat your parallel processes differently is really handy, but why wouldn't you just do this on a send? And I guess a send also counts as a parallel process, but when you do it on the track, you have the added bonus, if you want, of being able to process the mix of the two parallel processes. Parallel. So we can take our Super VHS chain, we can take our Crystalline chain, and we can compress the mix of those two by putting something after both of them outside of that effect rack and just dial in some compression on the two things together. I've been running through the dark, searching for a spark that's true. This feeling is tearing me apart. I'm looking to the stars for you. So now we've got that parallel compression bringing up the reverb in the spaces between the vocals, uh, which is something you might want sometimes. Really handy, there's a lot of fun to be had tweaking these different blends of effects to get um, a really cool sounding vocal or, or whatever you're processing. Just something that'll have more nuance and richness than the same thing with a bunch of effects in a row. <laughs> With spatial effects in general, it's usually a really good idea to do things in parallel rather than in series. Like I've heard of mixers who will have four different delays for the same vocal, and it's not like one delay after another, it's like different flavors of delays that the vocal's going to in different amounts, and that all mixes in to just get this kind of more polished sound, this kind of uh, atmospheric bed that sits under the track and you're not quite sure where it comes from. Another thing that happens if you're only doing your effects in series is that you'll have, uh, say, your reverb go into your delay or your delay go into your reverb. Delay and reverb can sound great together, but often it's a little too much to have one going into the other. It might get a little too washed out, so having them in parallel, you can control them much more precisely. I'm gonna highlight the spaced out plugin here, which is a reverb and a delay in parallel built in together. Uh, and you again have this XY control to blend with the dry signal as well. It sounds really great. My favorite thing about it though, this is just a little, little bonus fun thing, is you can randomize the parameters. This feeling is tearing me apart. I'm looking to the stars for you. I've been running through the dark, searching for a spark that's true. So just a really quick inspiration generator. Sounds beautiful. <laughs> All right, now here is a super pro tip for a great bass tone using parallel processing. Uh, this bass was recorded just direct into my interface. It's not going through anything fancy. Uh, I am compressing it right now with iHeartNY2. Dry. And parallel compressed. Just a little bit fuller. So uh, this is going into this chain here, which currently isn't doing anything. What I have it set up for though, is splitting the signal into just the lows and just the highs. And this is a trick I picked up from Mr. Bill about how you can do this with no phase issues. So you basically set up a chain with a low pass EQ. Then you set up another chain that also has a sub chain with this low pass EQ, the exact same low pass EQ settings, but then on that extra chain, you have another little sub chain where you're flipping the phase. So when you've got the low pass signal playing alongside the dry signal with its phase flipped, um, what you end up with is just the highs. The lows get canceled out. So that's what's happening on the high chain and then on the low chain, it's just the normal low pass. This can be a great trick for parallel processing where you want to apply different effects to certain segments of frequencies. But I think the coolest application of it is getting this really great bass tone. So uh, on just the lows, we're gonna put Parallel Aggressor. Now this in itself is a parallel effect. You can dial in a compressed signal called Spank. You can dial in the dry signal and you can dial in this signal called Heat, which is uh, just a distortion. So let's try this out on our low pass chain. Really nice aggressive bass tone uh, where the notes still come through really cleanly, which wouldn't happen if we applied that distortion to the entire signal because with so many more high frequencies being distorted, it would just be noisier. Uh, observe.
still kind of a cool sound that maybe you want sometimes and you know nothing stopping you from putting just distortion on your bass but when you want something subtler when you want some distortion but you also want some clean tone uh, I think parallel is the way to go and uh, this extra step of putting a low pass before the signal that you're going to distort I think is great now another thing that you can do on the uh, high pass signal is any stereo effects that you want to apply. Like uh, I'll throw on Magic Switch, which is actually a freebie from Baby Audio. It's um, just the chorus section of their Super VHS plugin. Sometimes you want a little chorus on your bass sound, uh, but it is better to apply that to just the high frequencies because um, if you're pitch modulating the low frequencies as a chorus does, uh, you'll lose a little bit of the definition of those notes, of course. But then also, you tend to want to mix uh, the lows of your bass in mono. Low frequencies take up more headroom, so if they're being panned, then they take up even more headroom. So keeping the lows in mono is usually the way to go on bass sounds uh, in your mix. and. Uh, this, again, gives you the best of both worlds. You can have some chorus on your bass tone, but it doesn't spread the lows of the bass out in the stereo field. Then you can even dial in how much of the highs or lows you want. Let's look at this project where I've got this low and high send set up. Now what's going on here? Well, on the low one, I've got another low pass going into a parallel aggressor, and then uh, I am monoing that. Just talked about bass mono. Gotta do it. And then on the high one, same thing, high passing, and then it's going into a parallel aggressor to add some saturation. Here I'm not worried about the phase of the EQs perfectly matching. We're just getting like the highest highs and uh, the lowest lows. So now any element of your track where you want the lows to be a bit more beefy or you want the highs to sparkle through a little more, you just dial it into that send. So like I'll usually send the bass and kicks to the low send. <laughs> I'll send vocals and leads to the high send. So you can hear the difference that makes there. This is something that I discovered a long time ago and I've used it on almost every track since. It adds a lot of mix glue compared to just doing a bunch of EQ boosts on those individual elements because all of them are going to the same compression and saturation. So they kind of end up working together and whichever is the most prominent element is going to uh, take up the most space there. Um, so a really handy one, parallel, parallel, parallel. <laughs> So this is my track Dust, and I'm gonna use it to demonstrate parallel compression on the master bus, another key place to use parallel compression. Uh, and I've got the tape plugin here. This is a nice tape emulator, so uh, it does more than compression. It does have a little bit of that um, tape compression uh, with this glue parameter, but there's also uh, some saturation here. There is some tone shaping, and then I'm not using it on this track, but you can add tape noise and you can add tape wear, like a little bit of wow and flutter. So I've got the mix dialed in at 75 here. Let's bring it all the way back to zero so you're not hearing any tape at all. This is what the mix is like. And I'm just gonna start blending in this tape style saturation and compression. So A, being it on and off. I'm gonna do some level compensation so we can really clearly hear just the tonal differences. So it's fuller, it's a little more glued together, and the drive is bringing out the highs a little more. I feel like without it, it's just a little bit more dull. So I hope these tips were helpful. I cannot recommend enough that you experiment with parallel processing of all kinds. Uh, thank you again to Baby Audio for sponsoring this video. You can check out their plugins. Uh, they have free demos of everything. They also have some plugins that are just free to download, and uh, they also have a bundle. So if you wanna get all of their stuff, you save a good chunk of cash, uh, I'll link to them in the the 
description. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.